If you're joining us for the first time and haven't seen my last video about how to create an orderly tangle with six interlinked squares, please go to my channel and check out that video first to get a better understanding of what an orderly tangle is, where it originated, and the very basics of their creation process. That said, in this tutorial, we're going to focus our efforts this time on a slightly more complex tangle namely a polylink of four hollow equilateral triangles. This is actually one of my favorite polylink types and I have one of these available uh, for 3D print on my Shapeway store which I'll provide a link to in the description. As you can imagine the techniques used to create this polylink tangle will be slightly more complex than the previous squares so once again I highly recommend going back and doing that tutorial first if you haven't already before attempting this one. Let's begin as always with an empty scene here in 3ds Max. Be sure you have the scene already configured to model to scale in millimeters, both in the viewport display and the system unit setup. Alright, so I'm going to open up a full screen here and we'll start by going to extended primitives and bringing up the uh, Hedra primitive and we'll just place that here in the scene and then we'll uh, change the radius on it uh, we'll type in 25.4 millimeters and we're using the tetra family obviously by default I'm tapping J on the keyboard just to get rid of the bounding box um, the next step will just be to add an edit poly modifier We'll go down to the edge level, all right, control A to select all, and underneath the edit edges rollout, we'll just click the split button. All right, and as in the previous tutorial, all that has done is uh, separated the uh, polygons into individual elements. All right, so now that we have everything separated into elements, we can go ahead and control A to select all of those faces and holding down shift on the keyboard again I'll tap the insert or inset key I'm sorry up here in the graphite modeling tools to bring up the caddy and in the amount parameter I'll type in an amount of 2.0 millimeters and then click OK now we won't need these uh, selected faces in the middle here so we'll just uh, tap delete on the keyboard to get rid of them and that leaves us with this um, tetrahedral uh, hollow lattice all right so now <clears throat> we'll add a push modifier on top of the edit poly okay and we'll tap L on the keyboard to switch to our left orthographic view okay um, now if I start moving the spinner you'll see that uh, in my case nothing is uh, happening here what I need to do is go back down into the edit poly and then control A to select everything and with everything still selected I can go back up to the push modifier and now as I spin the uh, push value you can see what's happening here it's pushing and pulling the uh, individual elements apart as we want them to all right so if you're moving the spinner and nothing's happening you need to go back down and make sure everything is selected all right so I'm going to type in an arbitrary value here um, let's see we'll start with uh, negative 14.6 all right and and that gives us this result and this is pretty close to what we want but if I zoom in here in the center you could see that we still have space between each element and what we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to overlap each element on each other perfectly here alright so I'll move the spinner again and uh, you know it's not giving me the result I want immediately so what I'll do is uh, hold down alt on the uh, keyboard and I'll just start tweaking the uh, spinner and you can see that uh, I get a perfect overlapping result right about there 
All right. So holding Alt gives you a much finer, uh, precise result uh, when you're using the spinner. All right. So negative 14.657 seems to be the sweet spot here, and that has um, perfectly aligned all of the uh, elements. Okay. So now what I'll do is um, I'll add an edit poly on top of that. I'll tap P on the keyboard to go back into perspective. So we'll go into our uh, polygon level again, make sure everything is, sele is selected. And I'll tap E on the keyboard to switch to my uh, rotate gizmo. Or I can just click it up here at the select and rotate button. And then the next step is to make sure your reference coordinate system is set to local. Okay. And then finally, make sure the absolute mode transform type in uh, button is enabled. And then in the Z field, we'll type in 30.0 and hit enter. And that's rotated all of the elements 30 degrees and has given us this structure. Okay, so now it looks like we just have uh, six triangles instead of uh, the previous. Okay, now what we'll do next is add a shell modifier on top of that. Okay, and I'll zoom in a little bit here into this corner. And as I move my spinner, I'll increase the outer amount to a point where the edges on both sides begin to intersect the other triangle. Okay, we don't want them to uh, completely intersect, obviously, but uh, we want them to touch very, very closely. All right, so as in the previous tutorial, uh, what we're going for here are uh, is increasing the amount and having them uh, fit as tightly as possible so that they're interlocked, so to speak, and uh, wouldn't be able to move. Um, again, you can hold down Alt on the keyboard while you're uh, changing the values in your spinner, and it will give you more precise control. Okay. So in my case, it's uh, 2.59, and I'll just round it off to 2.6 millimeters as the outer amount. So scroll down to the bottom and make sure select inner faces is checked and that'll save us some time in the next step here. Alright, next we'll add an edit poly on top of that. We'll go to our polygon level and you can see that uh, our previous selection from the shell modifier is indeed enabled here. It's passed on that selection through the stack. All right, so now what we're going to do here is just a little trick. Um, so to save some time, uh, hold down control on the keyboard and uh, in the selection of your edit poly uh, modifier, click the vertex mode while you hold down control and that will select all the vertices associated with those selected uh, polygons. Okay, now we could uh, go back to the polygon mode and uh, just delete them. All right. Now if we go back to vertex mode, you could see that only those vertices are selected. All right, so with those vertices selected, hold down shift on the keyboard while selecting weld from the graphite ribbon. And uh, the default 0 0.1 millimeters should be perfect. We'll accept that. And now all of those uh, selected vertices have been welded together. Okay, now before you deselect anything, hold down shift on the keyboard and switch to edge mode. All right, and you have to be using the icons here. Doing it by hotkey won't uh, won't give you the same result. All right, and when we hold down Shift while we while we go to our edge selection, 
it will select just the uh, edge loops associated with those vertices and nothing else. All right, um, and that's exactly what we want. We can now uh, hold down Control and Backspace or click the Remove button and get rid of those edge loops along with the vertices. Okay, and this is our tangle. All right, and we can export this to an STL, collapse the stack. Uh, we can collapse all at this point. And uh, we can either export this as an STL and send it off to be 3D printed. However, if you wanted to uh, round out some of these edges, uh, bevel some of these edges, uh, there's a couple ways you can go about doing that fairly quickly. Um, you could, uh, up here in the graphite ribbon, on, you could click the uh, Smooth 30 button and give it uh, instant... Uh, smoothing groups by 30 degrees and then you can go to your edge mode and up here in the selection tab uh, find where it says hard and that will select all edges uh, whose faces do not share the same smoothing groups and that uh, selects these edges here and from there we will be able to uh, quad chamfer and uh, we can give that nice quad chamfering, maybe with a couple iterations. And if we remove the uh, edged faces, you can see that's a nice bevel on the object. And you can go ahead and export that. So that's one way to uh, round those edges out fairly quickly. Um, let's bring the iterations back down to one. If you uh, wanted to add even more smoothness to it, um, another way is just to go back down to your edit poly edge level, control A to select all, and then go ahead and quad chamfer everything with just one iteration. And that would allow you to then either put a turbo smooth on top or an open subdiv modifier. All right, and with a couple iterations on Turbo Smooth, you can see that we have a really nice piece here, very smooth. All right. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial with this uh, variation of an orderly tangle, and I hope you join me again soon. I'll have another video up, a tutorial video, most likely very very soon in a couple days um, in the meantime please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to my channel um, and I'll see you again very soon